as we seek to learn from Jesus and how he lived, today we're going to look at the idea of silence and solitude. And I suppose what I mean by that at, at its most simple level is it's time away from outside noise and outside people a time where there is just no distractions there's no phone there's no tv there's no radio there's uh, no jobs to be done there's no people to interact with it's just you and god uh, it's not about shutting off your inner voice but it is about shutting off the outside noise and i guess it's just it's what we refer to as quiet time and it was something that Jesus was really, really good at. So in Mark 1 it says, And rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus departed and went out to a desolate, quiet place, and there he prayed. Again in Luke 5, it tells us that Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. It's really interesting to look at where that verse appears in in the Gospel in Luke Jesus has called his first disciples. The news about him has spread. He was becoming really, really well known and crowds and crowds and crowds of people were coming to hear him and be healed of sickness and hear the message of hope that he brought. But still in that time of business, Jesus often withdrew to lonely and quiet places and had time praying. And if you think about it, Jesus's mission was absolutely huge. It was literally world changing. He could have spent every waking minute spreading his message, healing people, but he understood the importance of withdrawing from it all and meeting with his father one-to-one. -one. Spending time with God in prayer and in worship and being renewed and refreshed and refocused and if Jesus needed that, then how much more do we need that? We are so blessed to have more information than we have at our fingertips than we have ever had in history before. And we are more connected in ways that we would never even imagined even 20 years ago than we ever have been. But that often means that we have more distractions and more noise than we ever have done before. One of the most important things that we can do as we live our life in the shape of Jesus and try to mirror him is make a deliberate time for God and God alone. And I think um, these verses from uh, 1 Kings 19 really stand out to me as we think about this. It says, the Lord said to Elijah, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by you. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. The work of God doesn't always need to be accompanied by something big or dramatic. And stillness and quiet doesn't mean inactivity. More often, Grace and love speak gently to us. And so it is desperately important, as Jesus did, that we make quiet time for this. To hear God, to listen, to worship, to be open and to be guided by the Spirit. Okay. So I want to finish with three practical ways that we can start to develop 
are silence and solitude in our lives. Um, for many of you this won't be anything new but hopefully it will be a useful reminder um, and an encouragement to you know keep keep on going and developing that. Uh, for others of you it might be new and so don't be afraid. Uh, this is something that we want to start slowly but we really want you to start having a go at it. It's important to say from the outset that this isn't an additional pressure on you, that it's um, something to add to your ever growing list of things and it, for it to be a burden for you or for it to be a New Year's resolution. We are in the business of building and developing disciples and these are long term practices that we want to teach you and instill in your lives that you will be with you for the long run. You know, we talk a lot in church about fruit and this is about developing fruit and fruit is an instantaneous and we won't start doing it tomorrow and have it all figured out. It is a process of growth and it is a process of development and trial and error. OK, but I'm going to talk a little bit about a couple of practical ideas that you may want to try, but don't rush. Develop them and develop them in line with your own rhythms with your own personality with your own god-given personality and the god-given responsibilities that you have um, these things i don't think are are things to be edged in i think silence and solitude and time with god in prayer and reading your bible are actually uh, the foundations that you build the rest of your life on but when it's not about being legalistic about this and saying you should spend this amount of time every day doing this and you should do it at this time. Mark, I think, probably will touch on the dangers of legalism next week. If he's talking about rest, he may talk about the Sabbath. And Jesus had some harsh words to say uh, about people who made rules around rules around rules. So it's not about looking at doing things in the mornings or the evenings. It's not about necessarily how much time as we come to this and thinking about silence and solitude, it's it's about our hearts and it's about being intentional and deliberate and excited about spending time with God and to learning and growing through him. So with that said, three, three practical suggestions. I think number one, and that's the big one, and maybe it's the really obvious one, but try and have a daily quiet time. I know it can be really hard, but I think it is so beneficial just to put aside some time each day to be quiet with God, with no distractions, with nothing else going on. Now, you know from things I've previously said that I think that five o'clock in the morning is the holiest time of the day. But I say that in jest, but in truth, for me, my quiet time happens in the morning because it's the only time this house is really quiet. If I can get up before Jem and the girls, then I've got time to be quiet and with God and to, to have that time with him how I want to, without any distractions. And I love it because it's, it's how I start the day. So it kind of sets me up. It sets my focus for the day. OK, if I was to save anything deep for the evening as soon as I shut my eyes in prayer I'd probably be asleep in like 10 seconds flat so that's not for me but it it doesn't really matter when you do this as long as you are deliberate in doing it about intentionally finding the time and for many of you who who have a regular quiet time you will know that you will try different things and see what um, works and what doesn't at different times and some seasons in your life it might be uh, bible study followed by reflection for other periods in your life it might be more focused on worship and just telling god how amazing he is then followed by a time of prayer for the people around you <clears throat> whatever you do i think it's a good idea to start with a, a kind of a declaration of intention as in just telling god that this is the time you've set aside for him and to ask him to be with you and to speak to you in that time and that to just let him know that you're his servant. I think that's a really, really good, healthy way to start that. It's very intentional. And then going on from there, you know, find out what works for you. But if you're coming completely new to this and not really sure, then why not try um, to put aside five minutes a day? And in that time, 
why don't you open your Bible to Matthew 6 and there you will find the Lord's Prayer. And just for a start off, for as long as you want to, just spend some time reading the Lord's Prayer and just reading it really slowly and thinking about it, thinking what brings to mind and focusing your heart on God. And just doing that for four or five minutes a day, I think uh, would be fantastic because there's so much good stuff in there as we read it. For me, I like to um, divide my time because I like to be quite organised. I try not to be too structured, but I always try and include some, some worship to start off with. Um, and then uh, if I'm going to be reading the Bible at that point, I'm, I'm trying to read it quite slowly and really take it in and, and, and not rush it rather than trying to get through a certain amount of pages in a certain time. And then have some quiet time reflecting on that before I go into a time of prayer. But try different things. Don't rush it. And certainly I would suggest in your quiet time, try not to use your computer, try not to use your phone, but just have a Bible and some pen and some paper and, and just yourself and God. So that's number one. Number two, minute retreats. So this is a really cool one. We can we I think it's such a good idea, good idea to be deliberate to have a daily quiet time. I think it's such a healthy and important thing for us to do. But we also need to be mindful of opportunities that we have through the day to focus our hearts back onto God. So yesterday I went to the tip, which is never a good idea between uh, Christmas and New Year's, and so I got stuck in the traffic there. And um, I don't know, I probably wasn't there for more than four or five minutes. But it was time that I then had, and I could have chosen to got, get frustrated. I probably did get a bit frustrated. Why was I so foolish to, to come to the tip on a day like this? But I could choose to use that time differently. I could see an opportunity and I could choose to improve it. Okay, so I could have been frustrated and got angry. Or I could spend a moment thanking God for the fact that I have, have this facility available to me and that, you know, we, we have this opportunity to get rid of our stuff. And actually, it's a real blessing and it's amazing that we have a tip that close to us in Burton and things like that. I could have reached from my mobile as I sat in the traffic in the tip and, you know, checked the news or checked whatever. Or I could have spent three or four minutes praying for my home group. Imagine how my perspective would change if in all those little bits of time I have, I reinvent them, I improve them, and those times where I'm in queues, where I'm driving, where I'm at the shops, where I'm gardening, or well, I don't really garden, but if you garden, looking at those slightly differently, those few minutes where we've got time to refocus our hearts on God and for those minute retreats. And I think that's just a really super practical thought. And the third way uh, is just to think a little bit about longer retreats. In an ideal world where we don't have families and things like that, yes, it would be getting away for half a day and a day. And it is something that we as an elders have done and will continue to do is, is have retreats where we draw ourselves away to a quiet place together. But it doesn't have to be something so big as that. It could just be something as simple as taking a walk once a week for an hour where we just go and we, we walk and we reconnect with God. We clear our mind and focus on him and just uh, take in nature and his amazing and wonderful creation. OK, so there are three little practical thoughts on this. Number one. Try it. Have a daily quiet time, just for five minutes, in a way, in a style and at a time that suits you. But shut off the outside world and give God as much time as you can give him as the foundation for everything else that is built. Number two, look out for those minute retreats and opportunities to improve situations that you're in. And number three, try and find opportunity for a longer retreat. So we're, there we go. Three super hopefully practical and useful things for you to take on board uh, as we look to the year ahead and as we look to learn and uh, mirror Jesus. Jesus and the life that he led turned the world upside down. 
And in so many things as we study Jesus, uh, it's an upside down world that we are encountered with. You know, if you think of the Beatitudes and the those with poor in spirit being blessed. These things don't make sense in the world around us, but as we get to know Jesus, as we learn from him and the way he lived and we learn his message, then these things start to make sense. And I think as we think about silence and solitude and these disciplines uh, over the next few weeks, what we'll find is that we recognise that to be uh, productive and to be fruitful isn't necessarily about needing to do more. What it is, is about refocusing ourselves on God and then doing the right things in the right order. And some things will fall away as we do that. And in hindsight, we'll look back and, and realize they weren't you know, as critical as we once thought they were. But spending that time reconnecting refocusing, realigning ourselves on a daily basis with God is going to be um, it's going to be pivotal in being able to do that. And it will take time and it will take effort. We sometimes refer to these things as spiritual disciplines because we do have to be disciplined and we do have to learn and train ourselves to be able to, to do them. And they're hard and can feel quite strange. And I just sitting down without your mo you know, mobile phone is a strange thing in today's day and age. You find yourself like naturally trying to reach for something to look at in, in that we have to retrain ourselves. But what's amazing is um, not only do we have the example that Jesus set us, but we also have uh, the spirit to help encourage us and guide us. And it is the most amazing um, gift that Jesus left us to be able to do that and to know that we are not alone in this and that this is something that um, God wants for us wants us to find as I said before that rhythm that rhythm of life that he intended for how we were created so I'm really excited to see how those thoughts unfold, unfold over the coming weeks as we as we explore these areas in a little bit more different um, yeah, as we explore these these areas in a little bit more detail. Um, but yeah, I think I've spoke long enough now. But um, I hope that was both thought provoking, um, encouraging and practically useful. And we're going to end now with prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord of all creation, at the start of 2021, we submit ourselves to you. We are your servants. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus. Thank you for the life and example that he set for us. Above all, Lord, we thank you for the sacrifice that he made on the cross so that the path could be made clear for us to enter into a real and meaningful relationship with you. Through his death and resurrection, we are no longer weighed down by the heavy burden of rules and regulations. And nor are we held captive by our sin. But through Jesus, we can know real freedom. Lord, help guide and protect us as we seek to walk with you and work with you. And Lord, we ask that you open our eyes to those unforced rhythms of grace. In Jesus' precious name. Amen.